Get ready, get set, for the best movie and pop culture talk in the universe, it's The Good Brothers on Mercado Airwaves, with your hosts, Alex Mercado and Mike Mercado. Welcome back to The Good Brothers, folks. I'm Alex, that's Mike. We are The Good Brothers, the best brothers, the best podcast in the Midwest, in the multiverse, in the spider pig verse specifically. Mike, how's it going? It is going how are you doing, good brother? Good. Not as good as Spider Ham, but good. Or yeah. Peter Porker, if you will. Nobody can ever be as good as Peter Porker. He's but good brother, we have a busy show. We are getting back to a little normalcy when it comes to recording, getting on the network, and we have a surprise next week on Mercado Airwaves: the return of Murder Mysteries and More. Gun Podcast has released another episode this past week. It's third episode so that's great for those ladies killing it, killing it absolutely sports from the couch because sports have returned we have two brand new episodes of sports from the couch that you get back on the network but good brother we have a lot of stuff we got to get to today. not just your ignorant opinions about sports mike which is usually mostly of our conversations but we can usually correct yes and we start off with one that we posted on the twitter page at good brothers pod has officially been moved by Warner Brothers, by Christopher Nolan. And this is a movie that really is the tentpole movie of 2020, right there with Mulan. But it seems like this is the one everybody's really hanging their hat on. And with this move, you know, we, you and I always talk about it, and I've especially said it on my sports show. I look for trends. I look what the billionaires are doing. I look what the people who make moves are doing. They keep pushing this movie back. We keep seeing, and we'll talk about another release that's that's been affected by COVID recently. What do you think when you hear the movie Tenet has been moved indefinitely? We've had Fast and the Furious. We've lost it. We don't know what's going on with Mulan. You, you were even some interesting stuff about Mulan's kind of uh, release. Now we have Tenet being moved. Where are you at with all this? You know, it's, it's been a long time coming. You know, they definitely needed to make this move. I think we were, for the first time in a long time, we saw negative press to Christopher Nolan, which we've never really seen before. So that's fascinating to me. I'm glad they moved it. Vin Diesel, Fast and the Furious, they were the smartest people out there saying, you know what, next year. We're not even dealing with it. They pushed it a whole year when we thought we were going to be open again. So kudos to them. Mulan is interesting because the week this all happened, when I call it the Tom Hanks day, when we found out our most beloved American hero, Tom Hanks, had COVID, and sports started canceling and the world just slowly shut down, Mulan had a press screening. But not a lot of people went to it. And we didn't get a lot of early reviews or anything. A lot of reshoots in this movie. A lot of questions in this movie. A lot of questions with Disney in general, of New Mutants now, too, of can they even release it on Disney Plus? Can they not? So seeing Tenet finally move, I think we're going to see a trickle down of every movie move. It's safe to say because California is such a bad state right now, we saw this coming. Like, we're in Illinois, and we're, we're doing very well, I would say. In this country that's doing very bad, we were on the lower side. We were in that other half of our state handled it a little better than all these other states like Texas, Florida, and California. So to finally see this movie move, it's disappointing. We definitely wanted to see it, but it was the right move because I don't want to watch it at home. So are we in a movie theater in 2020? No, not in 2020. There was rumors that this movie had to make $800 million. They cut those rumors. It's probably about half when Variety posted originally was about... It needs to make about 500, 400 million. I don't think we'll be in a movie theater this year. I'm hoping early next year. Again, until the, like we talk about sports all the time, like we're still not going the direction we need to go as a country. So it's really hard to say, well, my state's doing good. Yeah, but the, a lot of these big, important states are not doing very well. So in movie talk, California's doing terrible. That's what a lot of our stuff comes out of. It may be a little different in sports because you can pick up and move and, seclude a little bit but no mike i don't think we're going to be in a movie theater this year yeah i agree i don't think we're in theater this year i think most things are either going to be completely off the calendar or they're going to go to vod like uh like bill and ted in face the music and we just found this out this comes to us from hollywood reporter keanu reeves and alex winter reprise their roles as theater ted logan and william bill s preston in this prequel and it has been reported that the September 1st release by Orion Pictures will be moved into VOD, but also select theaters. And this is weird because NATO is the, the theater chains that take care of everything. The reason why you don't see a lot of VOD 
movies is because they have... So, for example, let's say we have an Avengers movie, and it's during the pandemic. I can't, as Disney, release Avengers on VOD the same time as a movie theater. That's not how our mm-hmm. our, our our agreement works. I have to have a certain amount of runtime in theaters first before I can have it at home. Exactly. And that's essentially what's happening here. So because Bill and Ted will be going to VOD on its release date, it probably won't, it, it, you won't be seeing it at a Marcus, at an AMC, mm-hmm. at a Regal. You won't be seeing it right there. But knowing that Tenet has now been pushed out indefinitely, Bill and Ted... The, the original comeback, it's the, the Kiana song. How do you feel about now this movie, Bill and Ted facing them, face the music, being straight to VOD? I think it's a genius move because a movie like that, these movies like The Invisible Man and stuff, I know that got a theatrical release, but it made a lot of money on VOD. We've learned this year that people are willing to pay for these VOD prices for certain movies. And I think Bill and Ted is a perfect example of, man, would I have paid to see in a theater? Possibly. It wouldn't have been my first pick in the summer. But on VOD, Keanu Reeves, we're in a quarantine. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. You're going to make your money back. And I think this is going to start a trend of we can make cheaper movies, make our money to entertainment out there. And I, I like that. I truly enjoy that. Like, I always go back to King of Staten Island and the Five Bloods, where you put those out there, one on VOD, one just on Netflix. We talked about three movies last week. Like, they're a home entertainment for you. So I think it's a genius move. Good on Keanu Reeves. Good on the producers. I can't wait to watch it. Yeah, absolutely. And it, it, it has kind of that feel of a movie that almost belongs on VOD. To kind of go with the nostalgic VHS, which a lot of people watched yeah. Bill and Ted. So I think that's going to be kind of cool. But it's it's a different world, and a lot of these movies have to take calculated risk. And this would, wasn't going to make a lot of movie in, money in the box office. So this is just them trying to capitalize and see what they can if they can catch lightning in a bottle. I think Candyman should do the same thing. I think Candyman's a perfect another one, a good horror film. You made it for not a lot. The more you push it, I think the worse it'll be. I think at this point release it sometime in October, November. I agree, yeah. And I think you'll make your money. And we've talked about this for years now, about the whole trend of eventually all you're going to see in theater are multi-billion dollar movies like Avengers and DC and Harry Potters and all that sort of stuff. You see smaller movies in theaters in a few years, I think. I think it's going to be kind of like going to an amusement park where prices are going to be a little higher. These movies are going to be about two and a half hours. And it's going to be more of an experience than just a film. What did you think about, and, and speaking of films that have been moved, what did you think about the image of King Kong versus Godzilla? Uh, obsessed. And yes. me and Mike have had this debate. King Kong is heavy favorite going in. I, if he's not, Mike, you are crazy. No, Godzilla is the heavy favorite. How? King Kong has thumbs. No, wait, Godzilla is literally a, a big dinosaur. He can go behind him faster no, than Godzilla can turn around and laser half him. He's whale, half dinosaur, half dragon. He's, he's going to do crazy. a Mario to Bowser and grab his tail, spin him around, throw him to a bomb. He'll pop back up on his shell or his back, and then he's got to do it two more times and he kills him. Let me ask you, just for you know fun, since it's a pretty light news day and just a yeah. lot more of a, a major... Headline news, but not a lot of like in depth mm-hmm. stories this week. For King Kong versus Godzilla, what is the bad guy? Is it Mecha Godzilla, but, 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 but with Ghidorah as Mecha Ghidorah? Yeah, it has to be. It's not going to be Mecha They're going to team Mecha up, yeah. obviously. Yeah. I like how they've already broken the seal, and I feel like Godzilla King of Monsters was that perfect seal breaker of we understand this is silly. We get it. I think that's what made the movie good is like that's how these those old classic Godzilla films were, were terrible acting. Weird story plot, but the monsters look great. And now that we've seen them in the daylight and just destroy the whole world, which we went back on an old bet. Mike was correct. They destroyed mm-hmm. everything. Mm-hmm. I'm excited to see this because now we don't have to hide the monsters. We know what they both look like. You showed us so much. Give me a big robot monster for them to team up against. Uh, and we have one more news story I want to get to headlines in the movie world, and it's something that might be potentially impacted by COVID, and it is Wonder Woman 1984, and this is kind of a spoiler, I guess, but I don't know if you've heard this story, Good Brother, about how they're bringing Chris Pine's character, Trevor, back into the story. 
And have you heard what it is? I've heard little snippets, but so, I don't know what's true and what's and not true. Is that true. his name? What's his Chris name? Chris Pine. No, no, Chris Pine. But what's the character's name in Wonder Woman? Steve Trevor, isn't it? Is it Steve Trevor? I believe so. Am I not crazy? Okay, I just I believe I, so. I just said Steve, Trevor, though, but yeah, I, I, I want to make sure. Okay, so uh, what ended up happening is the Wonder Woman has a novelization ca- that came out already. And it tells that there's a ring that grants people their wishes. And apparently that is how they're bringing back Chris Pine is by using that. Yeah, it is Steve Trevor. And that's how they're bringing him back. So what the story only goes for the first two acts of the movie. It doesn't say the, the big third act of the movie. But how do you think – what do you think about this type of stuff? We've seen it so many times obviously in this business and even the most infamous one, the Phantom Menace – soundtrack showing Qui-Gon's Noble End. Yeah. Qui-Gon's Noble End. So it's like they've shown the spoilers. What do you think about this spoiler of like, we know, because we've seen them in the preview, so they're not hiding it. They're not hiding it. I don't mind it because there's a even, like, I, that's the rumor I've been hearing, but that's because it leads to an even more obnoxious rumor of, is this an introduction of the Green Lanterns? Is this a possible, we want to keep Chris Pine, we like Steve Trevor, we like their you know, chemistry, we're not really going to get Ben Affleck again. Is this the way we get Green Lantern? I don't think so, but at least it's fun to talk about because I think that movie is going to be the bomb. Yeah, if it ends up working out the Green Lantern core from Wonder Woman. The HBO Lantern. version, but yes. Wonder Woman in general, I'm so excited. Oh, like, I can wait for that movie. Like, I'm so glad they pushed it because I didn't want to have to keep doing a tenant with it and, like, little by little, man, I don't even want to watch anymore. Like, I'm glad they pushed it. I'm so excited for that. Uh, is there anything else you want to talk about when it comes to the big screen in this week? Uh, again, not as much heavy news, a lot of movement, a lot of rumor and innuendo, but we got some stuff to talk about in the streaming and television world in just a little bit. But anything else on the big screen? No, nothing really on the big screen that kind of leads into the streaming stuff when, you know, HBO's looking for that big, big move, I would say. And I think that that's why you hear rumors of will they release one of these bigger films straight to an HBO to get those subscriber ups. And Wonder Woman is the movie you think about. I don't think that will happen, but it's interesting to hear so many rumblings. Like they're going to make a big DC move coming up, like a really big one. So I'm keeping my ear to the ground on that. Now, good brother. It's interesting. You bring up HBO and them trying to have this big, tentpole moment when it comes to the streaming i think they've really dropped the ball when it comes to hbo max this is something that wasn't on amazon fire stick this is something that's not on roku and obviously with them having hbo now hbo go hbo max hbo your mama like there's a lot of stuff that they have that has really just kind of muddled the field a little bit with how they're exposing that brand they're about to lose harry potter and they're gonna lose all the hair which is interesting because disney plus where it might be light in content it did have brand new content that was must watch at that moment hbo max does not have any must watch television on it it has great content yeah hbo does not make bad content but it not having that must see television has hurt it and this is where this story is really interesting we have officially heard the title that it is house of dragon from hbo the new game of thrones spinoff they are casting they're getting the ball moving on this this is a big move for them, obviously, with Amazon having the Lord of, Lord of the Rings series coming. There's a lot of movement in having these big tentpole series on your new streaming device. When you hear House of Dragon, when you realize that we're getting back to that world, what do you? What emotions brought up? I mean, we went through this journey with Game of Thrones. They get kind of a redo. They get their Better Call Saul moment to try to do better it, it, to some people's minds. How do you feel about House of Dragon from HBO and HBO Max in general? So I'll take the Game of Thrones one first. We both love Game of Thrones. I think we were both actually big fans of the last season. We thought they they did a good job. Was it perfect? No, but I thought it was better than bad as we're looking at uh, how Stark Banner, Banner uh, in the uh, studio. Yeah, yeah. So we're huge fans. I'm excited, but I temper it a little bit because it always feels like we're filming this Game of Thrones prequel, sequel, rebequel, mm-hmm. and we never get it. And we've they have filmed things that they're like, oh, we didn't like it. Oh, you know what? It wasn't it. So at this point, I'm like, I want to see something go all the way through to HBO. HBO's just not hitting the audience it needs to. It already has us. We were already subscribing. So all it did was change from now to Max for us. Mm -hmm. So that's how I have Max because I already had HBO Go So or now. So it just switched over. They have a great selection of anime, some of the best ever. Their classic movies are amazing. Yes. They're doing better with the DC. They're going to put Harley Quinn on it. They put Doom Patrol. They're putting more movies. 
Big loss of Harry Potter. That's not going to help. That's going to Peacock. So they're they're maintaining. Like HBO has some of the best original programming ever, you know. So we can't argue with that, but they're not hitting the new audience. They already have you and me, Mike. They don't need to keep getting us. The Snyder Cut was a nice start, but that was just news. That's not enough. People are going to wait until it comes out to sign up for a subscription. So for me, it's what is that going to, like, you need something bigger. Like, I love all the announcements you made, but I understand people being like, well, Disney released The Mandalorian with theirs. Like, I had to buy it at the moment. I can wait a year to get HBO when you finally actually release all this stuff. So they're in an interesting spot. Yeah, and it's going to be a really fun series when it comes to uh, House of Dragons. It's a 10-part series. It has to deal with the Targaryens and then the Civil War that is going to lead to it. So I'm fascinated to see, the, and it's interesting, as I was reading some stuff from The Verge and a bunch of different entertainment websites, apparently the big issue with some of these other Game of Thrones shows, one of them was going to be more of a vaguely connected to George R. Martin's work. Mm -hmm. This one seems to be much more part of his actual literature that he's made before. So that's where it's a little bit more fascinating. They wanted, I, I believe, to have a more stronger back yeah. and, and more lore to pick from than necessarily come up with a lot of original ideas. Which is where they started slat. Like, you can tell that's where they started losing the audience when they didn't have that background story. So I agree with you. Like, that's a really good place to start. Say what you want about the man. He wrote great books. And those stories led to some of the best seasons a television and once we ran out of those stories that's when the audience kind of split up a bit yeah so I, i'm excited for it uh what are you more excited for a game of thrones series or the lord of the rings series that we're getting from amazon Oh, game of thrones like that's my lord of the rings like game of thrones is the only would you call it swords and sandals yeah i, I guess so and shields the, yeah it, uh, sword and anything shield. to deal with a sword game of thrones is my life yeah. i love game of the game of thrones is one of my top five favorite franchises in general like when we talk about the Star Wars and Marvel, DC, Game of Thrones. I've seen it through three times. Big fans of the series finale. You know, King of the North is my king. Yeah, like game. It's Game of Thrones. We've we've talked. I'm not the biggest Lord of the Rings fan. No, I, I'm super stoked for Lord of the Rings. Well, what's like, yours? I mean, at this point, I'm super excited to see what Lord of the Rings is going to do. It's going to have the most money of any show ever created. Amazon, Jeff Bezos, everything mm. they wanted to work. Like, they want to take over the world. So I think they're going to hit on that front. I like some of the, the casting that they've made. Never forget The Hobbit. So it's going to be, yeah, of course. But, like, that's that's different. That's that's a different type of project at a different time compared to what we got when Lord of the Rings was coming out and then when that came out. Mm -hmm. But uh, what what I also find interesting is... Where this all is going to lead to original content and how much a lot of these these different companies are investing on these streaming shows. And then you see something like what, we're, what Disney Plus is doing. We First of all, we, we see that Taika Waititi himself has confirmed on Twitter a while back that he is already writing and directing the mm -hmm. new one. And he's officially got that started. So we know that that's on the pipeline at some point that Taika Waititi is going to have a Star Wars movie for us, right? Probably around like 2024. Yeah, they started really pushing the narrative once his episodes did so well on The Mandalorian. And that series uh, season finale was so great. And the way he was working with Jon Favreau. So that's when, like I said, we talked about this. But they started really pushing that even quicker once he got such great reception for his Mandalorian episodes. And in other Star Wars news, they there's been reports about Donald Glover signing on for a, a Lando series or a Lando movie. The reports vary, but this is coming from a podcast called The Castle Run Transmissions, which is claiming that Donald Glover will return to the role of Lando Calrissian for a new Disney original series. And there's... This is where the rumor's coming from. So not to disparage anybody because, you know, it's not like the Good Brothers are coming up with scoop scoops. Yeah. But the idea is this isn't coming from Variety. This isn't coming from The Wrap. This isn't coming from The Hollywood Reporter. So this, this isn't coming down the trades. So there's always been rumors about Donald Glover doing more stuff with Lando as Lando. But that, to me, it's like that you could make that report any few weeks, mm -hmm. especially when Star Wars is in the, the news cycle again. And it, it can never be proven wrong because he's already played the character. So, yeah. like, yeah, of course, there's probably been talks about it. So that's how I feel about yeah. that particular story. The way I feel about it is what starts to help these little rumors is he does have a really good relationship with Disney. Obviously, he did The Lion King. He was in Spider-Man. So he has a good relationship with them and they enjoy him. He is the Ewan McGregor of that movie where 
no matter how it, people are split on solo, people are split on the on the the prequels. But at the end of the day, those two characters came out untouchable. Where like you talk all this, if you hate solo, you love Donald Glover in it. If you love Solo, you love Donald Glover in it. Same with Ewan McGregor in the prequels. You're like, hey, listen, I hate the prequels. Ewan McGregor's my man. Or I love the prequels. He's my favorite part. So I think that's where people build these rumors is that's the story we want to see. Disney has done, I think, a great job of really taking this movement serious. And I think this would be a good start. Obviously, again, these are just little, can we connect the dots a little on the Good Brothers? Of course we can. Sure. He's also an artist. He's filming Atlanta season three and four back to back. That's going to take about a year or two, he said. He had a Deadpool script completely done. And Fox scrapped it because obviously they the were buyout. about to get buyout. So there's a lot you can do with him. He's a, he's a music producer, too. He's also a director and he wants to do a little bit of musicals, too. So he's a working man in general. And I can't wait to see anything he does. And I would love to see a Lando series where we see... Han come up later in it, though. Not the whole thing. What is the next... After Mandalorian, what is the next live-action Star Wars thing we get? Um, The Rogue One one the with Diego Luna. Oh, with Diego Luna. I think that yes. one would eventually pass up the, the Obi-Wan. I think the Obi-Wan, they're going to take a little longer. Cass and Endor? Cass and Endor, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So, yeah. Uh, that would be the one okay. I think jumps it. I think what they have issues with is when it has to connect story which is why people didn't like Solo as much. I loved it. But when you have to create that character again, you really have to live in that you know, playground. As where Mandalorian, you, you can play outside of it. Cast an Endor, we already know where it's going to end, so you can play before it. That makes it enjoyable. Same with the Clone Wars. You can play yeah. in these little circles compared to, like, you have to stay in the sandbox. Yep. Like, we, Obi-Wan has to get to here, and this has to be canon. So you only have this much little room to really wiggle around with but you can also have Darth vader so maybe that's the thing yeah it's fair uh any other stuff you want to talk about when it comes to the streaming world uh when it comes to television when it comes to star wars or anything else in the nerd culture world before we get into some other news that actually dropped the day of recording for the first time good brother you know nothing really new netflix just dropped fear city new york versus the mafia three episodes three uh one hour each that seems a little interesting. I'll check that out for us. Yeah. Other than that, we reviewed a few movies last week, a few shows coming out next week on, you know, The Boys and Last Chance You and Umbrella Academy. So next week we'll have a little more content with that. Yeah. But beside the Mob versus New York, nothing really new. Yeah, and if you guys are watching anything or you guys think we should watch anything, let us know. We've we've never actually put out a the bad signal to the Good Brothers audience to let us know. What are you watching? Try to stump us, yeah. And and give us something to watch that we might find interesting. Like, I, I am always up for some really fun suggestions. And as we get later into the year, when we start getting into horror season, mm-hmm. definitely into that. So, uh, Mercado21, Alex, and I'm at Mike and Media on Twitter. Let us know anything fun that we should be watching. And something that you should be watching, good brother, if you're a big fan of Star Wars. If you sat there as we gushed over what we might be getting, what have we been working on? That the audience, the beautiful audience of the Good Brothers can feast their eyes on and probably better their ears because it's a podcast. After this podcast, what do we have up for them? We are finally doing our top 11 Star Wars films. We've gone back and forth with the way we're going to do it, the style we're going to do it. I'm sure our list change. We want you to know two things, people. One, we love all the Star Wars movies. We are huge fans of every single Star Wars movie. Probably our lowest grade of a Star Wars movie is a B. If that, I would say. I would, no, I would say a C. A C, so for Mike. So I'm yeah. obsessed. Like, yeah. I love all of them, and I know my list will probably be a little more un, uncharacteristic of the normal opinions of Star Wars, but I just want everyone to know before you hate me, I love every Star Wars movie. Like, my lowest grade of a Star Wars movie is probably a BB+. Plus. Very good. Yeah, so you guys can check that out. Let us know your thoughts. That video will be posted right after this one. That podcast will be posted right after this episode of The Good Brothers is up and live for you all to enjoy or make fun of us and disagree with us. It's all good. We love it. Speaking of loving, Good Brother, guess what happened today live of recording? This is a Thursday, July 23rd in the beautiful city of Chicago. Xbox had its showcase today. And if you are a gamer, if you are a gamer between the ages of 13 to 40, 
This is the best time ever. I feel like as a 30-year-old, this is awesome. Like, the the quality of game, the hardware is amazing. Today, we got to see Halo Infinite in action. Now, some news after it. It looks like this is the last one. When it, they, they, see it, they, they are saying at the very least, this is the last foreseeable game moving forward. Especially when it comes to a, Halo 8, Halo 9, yeah. all that. It sounds like it's going to be a little bit of a destiny. There's going to be raids. There's going to be like ongoing missions. They're modernizing it. So it's become, and which is fine, as long as the story is good, as long as the gameplay is good for the 15 hours I'm going to play it. But it was nice. It felt like home. It felt like a nice, warm soup, you know, watching it. We got to see Fable, at least a teaser trailer for it. So obviously for this family, we love Fable, Very Fable Very Xbox two. One yes. phase uh, X- right there. Yeah, the first Xbox. Oh, sorry, yeah. Yeah, the, the first I Xbox. It is yes. actually named the original Xbox, Xbox with yes. the big old control. We had both those games. Well, it's funny. I got the original Xbox for Christmas when it came mm-hmm. out, and our dad, he wanted to make sure we got hooked up, that he gave me an entire booklet of Hollywood video coupons to rent video games, but obviously... When the first get system didn't come out at first, there were no video games for it. There was like Fusion Frenzy. Almost like they yeah. still have an issue of putting out original content, video games. Yeah, well, it looks like that's changed a little bit. There's some beautiful video games that are coming out right now. I finished The Last of Us Part 2. 60 million hours later. Yeah, it was a over 20-something hours played. Mm-hmm. It was a long video game. I love it. Final grade? Uh, 9 out of 10. Good grade. Yes. Okay, so you're pretty consistent with everyone. Yes. Your only problem is, from what I hear, length. It was length, time, pacing. It didn't know when it wanted to end. It had like 17 different endings. I I loved it. I think I'm good on... Here's the thing. I don't know if I'm good on Last of Us or if it's I played The Last of Us 1 right into The Last of Us 2 that... I'm pretty good on The Last of Us for a little while. It's hard because Last of Us is considered one of the greatest video games of all time. Not our generation, not the decade, of all time. We're talking about the Super Mario's, The Legend of Zelda's. The Last of Us is on that list. So to be the sequel to it, like for it to score a 9 out of 10 when your original scored like a 15 out of 10, that's good for them. Like they did as much as you could have, plus the leaks, plus the quarantine, I mean, I guess the quarantine actually helps video games at the moment. Probably more than anything. I guess yeah. most entertainments down across the board, but video games seem to be video games and home workouts. Look at Switch. Like be, the yeah. Switch went on a crazy selling spree. So I think, I don't know what the hate for Abby was. It's like people the, hate women. It, it, other than that, because like, look it. I made it. I, I, boy, when I was watching, playing the game, you can listen to it on the Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash Mercado Airwaves Network, Super Mercado Bros. Check it out. I made it. Uh, I'm like, yo, Abby's pretty jacked. And then when mm. you watch her backstory, you're like, oh, they're a military base. Yeah, in the zombie apocalypse, when you can't dick off, you're all going to be super soldier. Mm. You're going to be peak athlete type of stuff. So I'm like, no, I'm all. You're all the show. And it made sense because in the narrative speaking, they wanted her to tower over Ellie. That yeah. was a narrative choice. They wanted the encounters to be to the extreme where you're like, when Ellie's at an advantage, you're like, oh, I don't know how Abby's going to necessarily get around it. But also, if Abby gets one slither of an opening mm-hmm. on Ellie, it's over. Because- As a movie fan, it's a good heel. It's a very good enemy. You're like, I don't know how she's going to – she's towers. Like, I don't get how she's going to beat her, but I'm interested to see how she does. So I agree with you. As a movie standpoint, when I watched it, I liked her character for that reason. It felt very aggressive and like, okay, this seems like a human I'm a little scared of. It's like a Negan. You're like, I'm supposed to be worried about you. Yeah, so I, I 9 out of 10, loved it. It, it can't be as good as The Last of Us 1. Nothing, especially will, for nothing the, will ever be. Especially for the people who played it without knowing everything that happens afterwards. Like you, that impact. It, it was one of those games. Like a lot of video games, it's in the moment. Mm-hmm. In that moment, like nobody will be able to to touch it. This game did move graphics forward mm-hmm. and the way humans can look. But yeah, Last of Us Two, a must play. I loved it. I'm I'm a little drained from zombies and stuff. I played Resident Evil Two, Resident yeah. Evil. In the last sixteen months, we've had Resident Evil Two, Resident Evil Three, and The Last of Us Two. And we got to watch Train to Busan Two coming out oh, soon, so wait. that's gonna really fill in. So it's been a great time though. So Xbox, shout out to them. The real conversation now becomes if both of them do make it to a holiday release, which one the Super Mercado Brothers pick up first? 
It's leaning towards the PS5, Miles Morales, God of War so. 2. Yeah. There's a lot of... But if Halo is great, if Fable is great, there is some there is something to be said about an Xbox system. But it's funny because we were an Xbox family for so many years. We but had I've, both, but I've we were been a Sony family too. We were. I've had the PlayStation. We always leaned Xbox, though. We really did when it came to our sports games. When it came okay. to our like general consuming, I felt like overall we were just slightly toward Xbox. We had everything, including the Nintendo's guys. Yeah. But now I'm with you, man. I just. Because I'm going to get a new system because I'm I'm one behind still. I have one of the older Xbox Ones. Doesn't do anything for me besides playing Mortal Kombat and Justice Entertainment. For me, I'm like, you haven't sold me. Oh, I'm sold on a PlayStation, but I'm not sold on Xbox. It's like, I, Halo's great. Okay, I'll put it in and play Halo 2 or something. Like, for me, they're not giving me enough to say, buy our new Xbox when I can buy a new PlayStation. So, for me personally... I have always I've always been split down the middle because I love the PlayStation One. It's one of my favorite systems. The PlayStation Two it was better than the Xbox. I love the Xbox. Mm-hmm. The Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty was better than the PlayStation Three. Yep. The PlayStation Four is better than the Xbox One. Yeah. And Nintendo's always been an awesome secondary yeah, system. Right they've right. always been yeah. one. So to me, I've always I've never I'm not a fanboy. Like I have a lot of friends who are literally yeah. fanboys, and I'm like, it's so weird to me. Like both are dope, but they both bring different things. There is no comparing playing an FPS like Halo or Gears of War or something on Xbox. Like there is no playing God of War and Spider-Man and The Last of Us on PlayStation. Yeah. It's Horizon Zero Dawn. Like there is something about RPG open map games that are just so much better on PlayStation. Like we were and we we're lucky there was three of us, so that always made things easier to get multiple systems. I remember we could play a Halo 2. Third and person. A Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. And a Mario Sunshine or Double Dash. And we killed it. And we loved all of them. So we're not fanboys in our family. We're just, hey, listen, if I got to buy one right now, I ain't rich. So I'm buying this one. mine would be a plate. And we don't live together anymore either. So now it's, well, okay, I have to be specific. We each do need our own system. I will say this, though. Because Microsoft is such a world power that I could play a lot of my Xbox on my computer. Mm-hmm. Well, I had a little inspiration from where well, I bet you might be correct on Good Brother for all those longtime Good Brother fans. Henry Cavill, Superman himself, kind of tore the internet up a little bit because there was a video of him building his own gaming computer. He's a beautiful man. And to me, it's maybe I go PlayStation Five and I built a I build a PC. That's the new trend story. And be able to play my Xbox games. On my PC. You have the hair already, so you're halfway there. I'm I'm trying to get to that point where maybe it's the best of of both worlds to do it that way. And it's much more portable and it's Mm -hmm. I can I can make it my own cost efficiency. I can also make it its own little running thing on the on this network to watch the Michael (laughs) make a computer. Exactly. And I, I think that's something that a lot of people are talking about now. And that seems to I feel like you're right. That might be a trend we're gonna start seeing a lot more of. And a trend that hit the sports world is new team names, new teams in general. Sports are back. Before we talk about some of the major stories in the sports world, Sports from the Couch will be coming to you guys every single Monday on Mercado Airwaves. So make sure you guys are checking that out. This past Wednesday, though, we're going to try to have interviews for you if we don't have special stuff from the Good Brothers, from Murder Mysteries and more. If we do not, if we do not have an interview that is for you guys, but this past week we did. Paul Shavari from Baseball Weekend Journal joined us to preview and predict the 2020 MLB pandemic season. We got really nerdy and in depth about it, so you guys should check that out. We'll talk about sports in just a little second when it comes to the to the actual nitty gritty. But we have some team names we got to talk about. The Washington Slurs will no longer be called the Washington Slurs. We talked about that a little while ago in the NFL. But because, like I told you, Daniel Snyder is so bad, I told you they will mess this up. And guess what, good brother? They messed it up. Because this coming up here, they will be known as the Washington football team. They couldn't come up with a, with a new nickname. And their jerseys are going to keep their same colors. It's going to say Washington over the chest. And it's going to have their numbers like Alabama. Only Dan Snyder and mm-hmm. Washington can ruin and bunk this up like they did. Didn't I tell you this was going to happen? You couldn't just call them the Warriors. You couldn't. You couldn't just the Red Tails. Yeah, couldn't the just Red Hawks. like like, what are you doing? like people are sending you millions of ideas. All these trademarks, like 
It was so hard. Like, it was a gimme of, like, guys, you can literally name it anything except for, like, this 1% and you pick that 1% of, no, we still don't know what to call it. Like, is it really that hard to not be offensive? For them, it is. Like, it, like it's astonishing. Look at, I didn't even know there was a new hockey team. And they come up with one of the most bad, A, I'm not going to swear, logos and names that I've ever heard of. I didn't even know they existed in Seattle. And for that, team name is the Seattle Kraken. Awesome. That's a perfect hockey team name for Seattle. Like, I could, I saw that. I'm, Mike knows I'm not a hockey fan, but I love the logos and jerseys of hockey, man. Like, they are some of the best, most cool. My childlike mind of creating teams comes to, like, even the Blackhawks, which we disagree sometimes on, is a cool logo. Like, all these crazy cool logos. And they come up with a brand new one out of nowhere. Yet, America's biggest sport, one of their teams cannot figure out how to not be offensive. It's crazy to me. And it's funny because when you watch how they released it, it shows, it incorporates itself with the city. It looks cool. It looks modern age. Everybody knows what a Kraken is. And then when you actually see the colors, it looks like it's going to pop on the ice. It smells and just breathes and just has the texture of Seattle. We actually have it playing right now in the studio on the TV here in the Mercado Airwave studio. Well, the Kraken's a big thing because you see it on alcohol bottles or some of the most bought alcohol you see it on old spice you saw it in Watchmen. they compared it they created their monster of a kraken so these are you know look at that alone the kraken like people do know what that is so to me it's don't treat your audience stupid i think that's what washington is doing is they're making us feel like idiots they're like we're like guys we understand it's a business we get that but it is not that hard to come up with one other name. And then, like, look, at you can see it, the, the S going with how, the Seattle. Tentacle. The tentacle. Yeah. The tentacle. Yeah. And then you think about the Seahawks. You think about the Mariners. It just kind of goes with it. You look at how the logo is designed. It looks like it's been there forever. And then look at it even in the S right there. It has a red eye in there, kind of like Cthulhu. Yeah. So it's very cool. I, I, I'll i be honest with you. It might be just because it's the trending new thing, but I absolutely think they knocked it out of the freaking park. I agree. Keith Lee whoop, whoop. surrendered the NXT North American womp, Championship, womp. but I actually like it. He didn't have to take an L. Yeah. He, it, it's not double booking. It's not. It, and really, honestly, besides the kayfabe reasons why they told us not to do it, that he didn't want to jam pack. The, I get the that. Division. But what does this mean for this? Better meet Adam Cole's going to the main roster, right? Uh, yeah. Well, did you just see what happened with Pat McAfee? Yeah. The, the big yeah. work. That's yeah. fun. So it's a work. So here's the thing. As a UFC fan. And somebody who covers the sport, something that happens when there's a champion in multiple divisions or somebody that's that's jamming up the division by not defending the title in real life is a bummer because people don't get to be elevated. Mm-hmm. When you're booking it and you don't have to do that, this makes sense. Of course, would we like to see Keith Lee put somebody over? Yeah. The point is he's going to put somebody else over with the big title mm-hmm. for a big moment. This is okay. Yeah, I agree. And you're building up your mid card. Like, I like just off last night, we see Branson Reed won. And we're going to see a lot of these. I like the way they're putting it of, like, you know, I don't want to see. I love Gargano. I love, you know, Ciampa. And I love Cross and Finn Balor. But I don't really want to see them fight for the North American title. I want to see Damian Priest and the Reed and these new young and Swerve. Like, these new young guys build that title like these guys did a year ago. And let them all fight for the heavyweight. They're all heavyweight champions. Keep them at a heavyweight champion spot. We don't have to give them that. They don't need that title. So I do enjoy that. We are in the middle of a ratings war, you know, where it's going back and forth. And they're putting their best foot forward. You know, AEW just had Sammy Guevara come back. I, I don't know where we stand on that. I personally think it should have been a little bit more time. But I'm not, I'm not going to downplay that his presence is important. And it did matter for that faction. We're NXT, I'm an NXT guy more. I watched that first than AEW, personally. I don't like how AEW has their Tony Khan and Jim Ross kind of go out there like, we get it, you think you're better. You should think you're you better. Think you're I better don't need to hear you say it, Jim Ross, that or Taz. Like, no offense, guys. Like, I love y'all. I love your product. I don't need to keep hearing it from you that we think we're better and the other one's shit. I'm like, well, no. These are probably the two best shows in wrestling right now. So how do you think it plays out? Do you think my prediction of Keith Lee winning the Royal Rumble and facing... Roman Reigns, Andrew McIntyre for the heavyweight championship is out of the realm of possibility? No, I think we're still pushing toward that. I think we can push this down. I think Cross will be the man to take the title off of him. 
and then I think that's the best setup. When you have Keith Lee drop the title, it's because he's about to pick up the next big title right away, I think. He's your future. Like, he is your face. He is what we wanted Big E to be, I think, a few years ago. Of Like, if you're going to push a black champion, this is the one I want. I don't think we're getting the Big, Le- big E push. Maybe we are. Maybe, you know, they can they surprised with Kofi. We didn't think we were getting that. Yeah. But I think Keith Lee is on that verge of like, we need to, he needs to be the star. Like, he's going to beat Drew McIntyre. He's going to beat Roman Reigns. I, I didn't even think about it because it was, there was a lot of good stuff, but it was almost forgettable because a friend of the show, Conrad, keeps bringing it up. 2020, we're just going to kind of gloss through it. Mm-hmm. What did you think of Extreme Rules? It was fine. I liked the Swamp match. The opening, match, was the opening match was great. It was fantastic. I love yeah. that. I love a good tables yeah. match when they do it, right? Yeah. yeah. And it was great. I love all the bumps. Middle of the show was a little weird. Obviously, with the quarantine, it's hard to, like, this is an instrument champion, and this one is injured, and this one is, quote-unquote, sick or missing, but we know they're sick. So it, I don't blame them. Um, it was fine. I, you're giving me entertainment. You're giving me yeah. new entertainment. I'm not going to complain. We watch Slammiversary, dude. Like, yeah. I'm not going to complain when you give me free stuff. I'm going to watch the Yankees and Mets. Because you're giving me entertainment. We have some breaking news, good brother. Ba-da-bum, ba-da-bum. I'm glad you used that sound Wait, effect. am I right? Oh. MLB players approve plan for 16-team playoffs in short in 2020 season. So your Chicago Cubs and your Chicago White Sox will be Woo! in the Our playoffs. Chicago Road Series, baby. Oh, my God. Very interesting. Game seven. Cubs win. Overtime. Uh, extra <laughs> innings. Touchdown. Touchdown. <laughs> we going to the Super Bowl, y'all. Uh, so very interesting stuff. Uh, I, I'm a little surprised by that. I think it's interesting because this is a shortened season. They want to make it more interesting. I'm, I want to see, and I need a little bit more details about it. I'm going to do it after the show, whether this is just going to be round robin, if this is going to be a one-game playoff like the wild card, mm-hmm. if this is going to be a series. What Give me all the sports. Um, very interesting. Uh, it's interesting that they picked this now at this point. We still don't know where the Toronto Blue Jays are going to play because Canada isn't letting Americans into their country. So there's a lot of stuff that uh, we still have to hit at that that point but finally i guess we go back a little bit into the wrestling world good brother so we have that adam cole having that that uh kayfabe thing with pat mcafee pat mcafee is awesome so it's i think your i think it's undisputed era and drew mcintyre moving forward i think we do see randy orton versus drew at SummerSlam. Mm-hmm. drew wins yeah and then we get undisputed versus is adam cole the man to take the title off drew I, don't, I don't i don't necessarily know that i, I don't know about that but the I I tend to we, I think a lot of us forget that we're already at the end of July. Yeah, no, we're we're getting we're getting to like we're gonna have to get a Summer Slam, and they announced a takeover. We're getting a takeover, yeah, takeover thirty, yeah. which looks kind of cool. What like a I like freaking logo. ladder match already announced. Like I can't wait. Where was Summer Slam supposed to be this year? New York, Los Angeles, Boston. Where was they? Where was it supposed to be? Do Man, I really don't know. I don't, I don't remember. It was supposed to be a major city. I thought so. I don't want. I don't know why when you said Boston that felt right because Sasha. I kept thinking like something big was gonna happen for Sasha at SummerSlam this year. But I guess that's almost anybody who watches wrestling always thinks something big is gonna happen for Sasha or for one of the major four. And if Adam Cole does move up, the real question always becomes: Will Vince think he's too small? Every, obviously, nobody knows what Vince is thinking at this point. It's also. I think he's willing to take more chances because there's no live gate. There's no audience. There's only so much you can do. The ratings are going to suck. Boston was correct. Good job. Yes. All right. Now, before we move on to our final topic of the day, good brother, how do you think wrestling is going to respond? AEW, NXT, Raw, SmackDown. SmackDown probably the least of them all. But those three particular ones that I named first are all struggling with the ratings. We don't necessarily take all the ratings into account because we know there's a lot of other analytics. It's not really a big part of TV anymore. But what is a big part of television and streaming is sports. Mm-hmm. And everybody is thriving for it. We're not just talking about the UFC, which I love covering. It's a it's a fascinating yeah. sport. It's not Major League Baseball. It mm-hmm. is not LeBron James. It is not the NBA. It is not it's the NFL. Nope. So how are they going to handle this next competition of, of counter-programming? I mean, the same way they always have, I think. I think at this point, it, it's going to really prove, and I hope that when sports come back, it finally proves that ratings for wrestling don't mean anything. It's all about your sponsorships. It's all about your hits on YouTube, your hits on the internet, you know, you, your demo. I know we joke with Chris Jericho and we think it's kind of stupid the way he says it, but your demo does matter. And they both do very well in the demo. Like if you're comparing each other, well, yeah, you're competing, but you're comparing it to everyone. You're like, well, you're both doing very well for a cable program. So it's fine. So I, I think it's just going to, like I said, at this point, 
to bring up ratings and wrestling is kind of you just don't know enough about what they're looking for. And lastly, good brother, you mentioned it earlier on in the show. Comic Con would be going on right now. Mm -hmm. We have to bring it up. We do it every year. R.I.P. to the King of Shweddies himself, John Schnepp, the anniversary of his death around this Two time. Two years, year. yeah. Uh, so, you know, earlier obviously, this week, I believe Monday yeah. was it. How does it feel no Comic Con this year? We're getting obviously a lot of the digital stuff. We'll get some stuff in August for DC and yeah. what they're bringing with Warner Brothers, but no Comic Con. It's, you know, it's. Well, I guess we're used to it. Like we by already now, yes. by now because yes. we already lost opening e day. We e already lost E three. We already lost WrestleMania. Things we always go to. Like I haven't missed an opening day in I think seven years for the Cubs. No matter who they were playing. So for me, that sucked. But like, so by now, just saying, oh, we knew we weren't going to get it. We didn't get our uh, Star Wars celebration. So it's like, okay, well, we'll get. I know we'll at least get one or two, maybe three, really fun little stories. I mean, at this point, I'm just, we're lucky to work, right? Yeah. We no, have bigger seriously. things to worry about, and we're lucky we can still do the podcast, and there's enough news that keeps us going. Good brother, by the time the fans have listened to this, they would have watched the first baseball games of the year. By the time they listen to this, the Cubs and the White Sox locally will be playing baseball. You and I will be watching the entertainment world as we get news every single day. The world is trying to get back. The United States, we have our own internal issues, but at the end of it, we know that there's going to be a lot of news because these companies are going to start revving the engines up. We can't say it'll be good or bad, but we'll say we'll cover news, guys. We'll cover the news. So, good brother. Any final thoughts on a uh, fun, loosey-goosey, but still a uh, pretty beefy episode? Yeah, we got to stop telling people it's not going to be a long episode because we always find a way to have a conversation. Yeah, man. that's all right. For the good brother himself, Alex Mercado. Adios. I'm the good brother, Mike Mercado. We'll see you in the next episode of The Good Brothers here on the Mercado Airwaves Network. Thanks for joining us here on The Good Brothers, here on Mercado Airwaves. Hey guys, Mike here from Mercado Airwaves. We want to thank you so much for all the support you've given us here on the network. And if you want to see what we're up to outside of the station, please follow us all over social media. I'm on Twitter at Mike at Media and on Instagram at Mike Mercado Media. You can follow the good brother Alex Mercado on Twitter at Mercado21Alex and on Instagram at Mercado2121. The lovely Nicole Macho is on all social media platforms at Typing When Tipsy. You can follow the network on Twitter at Mercado Airwaves, our pop culture show, The Good Brothers, on Twitter at Good Brothers Pod, our true crime shows on Instagram at Murder Mysteries and More, and of course, like us on Facebook at Mercado Airwaves. You can see all our videos on YouTube.com slash Mike Mercado 2333 or by searching Mercado Airwaves Network. We play video games on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Mercado Airwaves Network, and of course, you can support our network by finding a tier just for you, whether you want early access, you want to be part of polls, you want to win contests prizes by visiting us at patreon.com slash mercado airwaves and we really appreciate it wherever you get your favorite podcast to like rate review and share us and please spread the word for the good brother alex mercado for the lovely nicole mancha i'm mike mercado thank you so much for all the support you've given us here on the network 